continuing our series on the Native Americans. We're going to take a look at the Native Americans of the Southeast, so states Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, all the way up to Kentucky, Tennessee. This is uh, Native Americans of the Southeast, so this region of the country. Moving out here. Okay. Southeastern tribes benefited from warm climate and fertile soil to produce excellent crops. All right. Okay, most people lived in villages and worked as farmers. Okay, later, uh, when the Europeans come, this section of the United States will be used for the same thing. Uh, tobacco, uh, different crops, eventually cotton, and of course the South ends up developing. Um, as an agriculture as opposed to the north being for industry and Native Americans uh, had the same opportunities too. Alright, this so this would be a dwelling of the Nanchez Indians. Okay, they built their homes from young trees of saplings which were woven together making frames and walls. Okay, the walls were, ta uh, were then covered with a combination of clay and dried grass. So uh, a little bit different than our other Native Americans we've take the, uh, we've looked at. All right, gender roles. A lot of Native American cultures were uh, different than European as um, the um, as far as family was concerned. You have something called what's called matriarchal. So you might need to know that term matriarchal society as opposed to patriarchal society. So what a matriarchal society focuses on women. Okay, so men cleared land for farming, hunted animals such as deer, and women had roles planted and harvested and uh, harvested the crops. But a lot of times, um, in a lot of these tribes, if you were part of the family, you would become part of the woman's family, um, which would be different than European society where a woman would take the man's name. Today. So major crops included beans, squash, pumpkins, and sunflowers as well. All right, religion. Most religious ceremonies revolving around farming, including the green corn ceremony. Uh, the green corn ceremony which took place in uh, the midsummer when the corn ripened marked the end of the year. Okay, several days of celebrations would occur, recognize the start of the new year. Okay, the Nanchez Indians. Okay, at the Mississippi River Basin. Okay, the Nanchez um, lived along the Gulf Coast where they had fish and farmed fertile soil and hunted the abundant wildlife. So this would be modern day Louisiana, uh, Mississippi area. Okay, they divided the uh, year into 13 months, which uh, each of which was named after a food or animal. Okay, examples include the month of uh, strawberry, little corn, turkey, and bear. Nanchez religion's belief, uh, beliefs uh, focused on worshiping the sun. Their ruler was the great sun and uh, worshipped as a god, and he lived on top of a giant pyramid mount. Okay, the feet of the great sun were served to pose to touch the ground. We're never supposed to touch the ground. Okay, as a result, he was uh, either carried from place to place or walked along, uh, along mats placed on the ground. So he could never, ever touch the ground. And as you see in this uh, picture, everyone's carrying him around. Okay, upon his death, his wife and servants were executed so they could accompany him and into the afterlife. That's kind of similar to the ancient Egyptians. Uh, when a pharaoh died or a leader died, all of his servants and everybody was buried with him alive. His animals, his servants, um, his wives, everybody was put in there with him. And so they would be locked away and starved to death. Okay, Natchez uh, social hierarchy. So you have the great son, which was the leader, and he had his little sons, a family of the great sons. So that would be his sons and daughters. Okay, the nobles, children of the male sons. Okay, and also honored people, children of the male nobles. Eventually, uh, the commoners, children of the male honor people. By law, everyone, including the great son, must marry uh, in what's called a stink yard. 
Okay, they were able to marry within any of those other social classes. Okay, we're going to take a look at a powwow. So a powwow are um, social gatherings that including competitive dance as well as honoring ceremonies. These gatherings can take place on a family, community, tribal, regional, or um, even a national event. Um, so they actually have these um, down by um, uh, Angel Mounds. They'll have uh, uh, Native American ceremonies uh, depicting what's called a powwow. Um, so you're going to see one here. Um, I recommend going to see a powwow sometime if you ever get a chance, maybe Angel Mounds. Um, uh, during my college years at Central Michigan University, we were the Chippewas, and uh, right next to our college there was um, a uh, uh, Native American uh, tribe there, the Saginaw Indian Chippewa tribe, and they would host powwows, and a lot of college students would go there uh, to just take a look at those. It's something a little bit different. Uh, the Cherokee ancestral land included parts of the modern-day North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee. So this is the Cherokee people here. Okay, the Cherokee attempted more than most um, attempted more than most tribes to live in peace with the United States government and surrounding white settlers. Um, Okay, a Cherokee leader um, created a Cherokee alphabet using Greek, Hebrew, and English le lettering. Okay, soon after the alphabet was taught in Cherokee schools, Cherokee newspapers uh, were being published and the Bible was translated into Cherokee. Cherokee also created a uh, Republican form of government and constitution based on Constitution of the United States. Okay, in 1830, Congress passed the Indian Removal Act, which forced Native Americans to move to lands west of the Mississippi River. We'll talk about this later in the semester. Uh, even though the Cherokee Indians really tried to work with the government of the United States, um, uh, Andrew Jackson, as president, decided that uh, they there was no room for them, and they continued to have treaties with our United States government later, and still forced off of their land. Okay, the Cherokees brought uh, the state of Georgia to court in an attempt to stop their lands from being taken. And throughout this class, we'll take a look at how um, the Native Americans were treated by Europeans coming over, eventually uh, on our own American government. Uh, not the best. So you had the uh, Supreme Court case you're going to take a look at later, uh, Worcester v. State of Georgia, in which the Supreme Court decided in favor of the Cherokee Indians. Said that, hey, we had uh, the United States government has to uphold these treaties, but still Andrew Jackson as president forces them off their land. Something called the Trail of Tears. So here's President Andrew Jackson. He will be our seventh president. Uh, allowed the state of Georgia to continue and seize Cherokee land. Okay, Jackson stated, John Marshall, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, um, he pretty much said, hey, he's uh, ruled, okay, now let's see him enforce it. Okay, so our Cherokee Indians of uh, the southeast were rounded up and forced onto reservations farther west uh, in what's modern-day Oklahoma at the time called Indian Territory. A lot of them died. 1838 forced at gunpoint. 
the U.S. Army takes the Cherokee and marches them from the southeast out west, or most, uh, many, many, many die or frozen to death. Uh, we'll talk about that later in the semester as we get into the 1830s. Okay, thousands of Cherokees died on a journey which became known as the Trail of Tears. Okay, this is a, um, uh, a Georgia soldier who was uh, pushing the Native Americans farther west. He said, I fought through the war between the states and have seen many men shot, but the Cherokee removal was the cruelest work I ever knew. 